Today, the PCC Europe contingent heads to Brno. Uh, Isaac Kowalczyk is saying on the poll, uh, Rus Autosport actually managed to sweep the top three as Christopher Loxon, who has won the poll for the past two rounds, has suffered some problems in qualifying. Uh, Winslow Brothers sweep row three as we go further back. Uh, James Hewitt won here last year in uh, quite an upset victory uh, due to many of the cars failing uh, to make the finish due to some mechanical issues. Uh, hopefully that uh, most of these cars have those mechanical issues sorted out. Uh, Rus Autosport cars were in that race. Uh, so are the 42 and 43. As we go further back in the field, there's Anders Magnussen driving for Northern Light Motorsports making her first start of the season here. Erin uh, Williams makes her uh, first start since Il Bianchi. There's Gottfried Homestead in the 06 driving for Northern Light. Going further back, uh, Christopher Loxon really botched his qualifying lap. He went off in one of the turns and uh, actually ended up qualifying 32nd back here in row 16 there right next to Koopy Winslow, uh, the uh, youngest of the Winslow brothers. Uh, he usually uh, has won quite a few titles in PCC lights, but it's going to be an uphill battle here for Christopher Loxon if he is going to uh, take the victory here today at Brno. Isaac Kowalczyk brings the field to the green flag, and in the back you can already see there, they're fanning out three and four wide, trying to get as many positions as they can early on when all the cars are bunched together. It's very hard to pass on this track. Kowalczyk starts to pull away from the field, followed by Chernov. Chernov, the top two, have separated themselves from the pack as they're still three and four wide back there, battling for third place. Third place for Shumi Winslow. Looks like Salvatore Torre Grossa, and oh, Shumi Winslow makes the move. And he's going to move up to third place there over Sergei Yakovsky, but it looks like Kowalczyk and Chernov are going to continue to lead. Back in the pack, Brandy Nikolaev gets hooked by Mark Donovan, goes into the side of Gottfried Homestead, and he goes around. Going to the back of the pack there, there's Koopy Winslow. He's going to run with him for a little bit. But that's going to be a huge setback for Brandy Nikolaev. He was hoping to get a good jump in the points here today, and now he's dropping all the way back there. Christopher Loxon in here making progress early on. He's already up into the mid-20s after starting 32nd. His attention, I don't believe, is 100% uh, here. He did qualify for a race in Karyala in another series, and he's gonna, um, he's really trying to do quite well there, but he's working his way up towards the front very early on. Looks like uh, Isaac Kowalczyk has really started to put a gap on Leonid Chernov and the rest of the field. Shumi Winslow running a very strong third over Sergei Yakovsky at the end of lap one. Here's Franz Bergman running in the mid-20s, and at the end of lap one, he's going to bring his car into the pits. Looks like he's encountering some kind of problem in that number 79 car. Uh, the 79 and 89 driven by Bergman and Rutcher are going to run the entire European Tour alongside the main PCC Cup Series uh, here in a couple weeks when they move over here. Shumi Winslow, as I mentioned before, having an excellent run here in this number 713 car, the eldest of the Winslow brothers. He's doing quite a good job here in this number 713 car and has shown quite a bit of speed. He qualified up in 5th or 6th position alongside Mercedes. Looks like uh, Christopher Loxon here is up to 21st already at the end of lap 2. He is one spot out of the points and there's Mark Donovan in front of him running in 20th place. So he's really starting to push towards the front very early on. He's already gained about 11 positions since the start and uh, Loxon, he managed to time his way into Karyala in that um, other race that I was referring to. He did that in the second qualification session, so he appears to be starting in the top 20 for that. And that'll be his first start in uh, that series over there uh, in Finland here in a couple weeks. Here's Dalia Aliwi in the 001 car running in ninth place at the end of lap number two. Very good run for her as Concesa Montiero in the background there reports a problem and goes into the pits. Uh, that's going to hurt her chances at getting into the points, but uh, Aliwi and Williams, both for the Williams Racing Team, are doing quite a good job here today, running 9th and 12th currently at the start of lap number 3. Uh, here's Christopher Loxon and moving up to 17th place, going around Giuseppe Balducci there in the uh, 42 car, and he's really starting to cut through the field now. Gracie Benson there and uh, Carolina Storman, I don't believe are going to be too much of an issue for Loxon as he's 
pulling up almost to his teammate now, uh, Jan Schmidt there in the 37. And uh, keep in mind that Jan Schmidt actually started up uh, this far, so that just tells you how fast that Loxen has been cutting through the field and how much better he is handling his car than his teammate in the 37 there. As looks like uh, Carolina Starman's going to give him a bit of an issue, but he's going to continue on. Uh, Anders Magnussen here is running in 20th place in the last uh, points paying position for Northern Light Motorsports. We've seen this team already at Brno last year uh, with Magnussen and Homestad. They're driving uh, the 2 and 1 cars respectively, but here they are uh, in the 07 and 06 cars. Homestad is right behind him in 21st place, and they're really uh, just kind of try and get as many points as they can here today. Ed Boddicker running in 30th place on lap number 4. He's breaking down, and uh, that's not looking good for him. He's sitting 20th in points right now uh, in PCC Europe, and uh, at this rate, he's not getting any more points. There goes Koopy Winslow and uh, Elaine there in the 15 car. So it looks like he's done for the day. He's just going to park his car there, get out, and get towed back to the pits. On board with Isaac Kowalczyk as it's lap 5, and we're getting lap traffic. There goes Clint Lend in the 0 car. Uh, all these drivers are obnoxiously slow. Uh, I mean, if you're getting lapped in five laps at a two-minute a lap track, you know, that that pretty much tells it all right there. There's Jorge Verona, Alexander Smith, and uh, Davius Flimflam there in the sped box car in the 990. Oh, he's going to pull in front of Kowalczyk, block his path a little bit, get a good shot of the sped box logo there. And... Uh, Still blocking, still blocking, still blocking, and there he goes. He's laying him on by. Uh, that wasn't too hard now, was it? Here's Shumi Winslow running in third place. Oh, uh, here comes Clint Lend, and he's going to block all over the track. There goes, uh, oh, he's going to lose a couple spots here. There it goes. Uh, looks like, oh, yeah, he's down to fifth now. And still blocking, still blocking, still blocking, still blocking. Oh, it looks like we've got some problems with the 43 car. Salvatore Torregrossa in the 43 has exploded. Uh, there goes the engine on that car, and unfortunately his day is going to end very early on. He was looking, it was looking like a really promising day for that 43 car. He really needed some points, uh, but unfortunately reliability has been the issue uh, for the Scuderia Italia team here, and they're just, uh, they haven't had the reliability to back up the strong results that they've shown. Here's a battle for the lead on lap number six. And, uh, well, that's really close. Looks like Chernov there is right on the back bumper of Isaac Kowalczyk. However, Chernov, I think, has burned off quite a bit more um, of his tires trying to get up there. Uh, Kowalczyk's just kind of riding, and the only reason he's gotten this close is due to lap traffic, I believe. You can see there uh, Kowalczyk's starting to put a little gap between him and Chernov. Uh, although Chernov, he, he's starting to come back a little bit. Uh, Kowalczyk is is uh, actually considering coming back to running PCC Cup full-time. Not sure when he's going to do that, probably next year, as he does have WSCC commitments that he has to maintain, uh, as he is currently in the championship hunt for that. I believe he's third or fourth in points right now in the WSCC. And, oh, looks like Giuseppe Balducci's having some problems in the number 42 car. Tough break for him. He was running up in 17th place in the lower points, and uh, there goes a promising day for him. Uh, Scuderia Italia, as I mentioned before, does not have the reliability that they need, and that's uh, both of their cars basically out of it uh, at one-fourth distance, so that doesn't bode well. Carolina Storman runs into the Joha Vovacic there, and they go off, uh, keep going, not too much damage, just some side damage and quarter panel damage on the 991 and 373, but Carolina Storman lost a couple spots there, and she was already running in the low points, so she's going to have to struggle. Uh, to make that back up. Here's Christopher Loxanen, and he's already battling with Aaron Williams up here for 10th place on lap number 7 of 20. So he's really flying towards the front, and he is determined to get as many points as he can and try and salvage his uh, PCC Europe season. Uh, really pushing forward, trying to do what he can. Oh, looks like Williams is going to block him there, and uh, that position might be uh, a little harder for him to get than he expected. Sean Spicoli here in the 82 car is running in 20th place. He has the last points-paying position. Murphy Weller behind him is uh, going to try and catch up. Uh, those two cars are in a technical alliance. Delta City, uh, I think it's Delta City Motorsports 
is the team name of the 87 and 209, and they're in a technical alliance with Retro 80 Racing, so they've basically got a seven or eight car team here today. Uh, so they're really kind of spread thin, but they're, they're doing what they can with what they've got. Louis-Philippe Goslin having a good run here today, being hounded for ninth place by Christopher Loxanen, no surprise there. He's really pushing on the back bumper of that uh, 17 car. Louis-Philippe Goslin driving for seventh gear uh, Autosport. He's doing a good job here today for that team. Currently carrying the banner for them as uh, Gracie Benson is not having a great day, and Brandemir Nikolaev got hooked by Mark Donovan, so Louis-Philippe Goslin uh, pushing forth with that three-car team, seventh gear Autosport and leading the charge in ninth place. Murphy Weller now here going for 20th place. Gottfried Homestad has a little bit of damage, that's why he's a bit slow. And it looks like he's going to try and make the pass here, entering this turn on Sean Spicoli, and he is going to take 20th place away from Spicoli, and that is the final uh, points-paying position here uh, in the PCC Europe Series. They only give points to the top 20, so that means Murphy Weller is in, Sean Spicoli is out of the points. Uh, Isaac Kowalczyk now dealing with some more lap traffic going through there. Davy S. Flim Flam and Alexander Smith. And he's really starting to pull away uh, from Leonid Chernov, as you can see there in the background. He's getting smaller and smaller. Alexander Smith and uh, Jorge Verona there. Uh, the Costa Rican, for some reason, attempting a bunch of European events. That doesn't make much sense to me, but whatever. And uh, Isaac Kowalczyk definitely pulling away there. You can see he put quite a bit of gap on Chernov. Now, here is Louis Ballard, and he's really slowly just been making his way through the field, minding his own business. He's up to fourth place. Uh, he's pulled away from Shumi Winslow, and uh, he's just kind of running his own race. He's not at the pace of the three Rus Autosport cars in front of him, and uh, he's a lot quicker than the cars behind him, so he's just kind of stranded himself on this little island in fourth place. Clint Lend here. Uh, horrendously slow. We'll show you a shot here of uh, how the cars basically have to deal with these back markers. And oh, Aaron Williams swerving all over the place. He gets split there by Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer and Michael Grant. And oh, goes to block Gracie Benson. And hold the line, seriously. Is, is it really that hard? Or are you, like, is there something wrong in, in your head that you can't hold a line? Okay, there goes Mark Donovan. Here comes Andrews Magnuson, Carolina Storm, and they're going to split him coming into this braking zone. So, oh, these lap cars are a nuisance. Absolutely a nuisance. Isaac Kowalczyk, you can see, really has pulled away from uh, Leonid Chernov, who I believe is reporting some kind of problem on that 66 car. He's been dropping back a little bit quicker than we expected. Uh, top four were in that last shot, but uh, looks like Kowalczyk is putting at least... Uh, that last up, he put at least seven tenths of a second between him and the rest of the top three. Uh, Kowalczyk is really on form here today, putting together a perfect run in that number 16 car. Uh, here's Shumi Winslow and Mercedes Winslow, you see back there, the Winslow brothers, uh, both sponsored by Patronus, and uh, they're really doing quite a good job here today. They're running in fifth and sixth. And I believe that those are their best two performances so far uh, this year. And Vital Winslow, uh, one of their younger brothers, uh, driving for Red Bull here, is in seventh place. So uh, a very good day for the Winslow brothers, uh, barring Koopy, who really I don't think has much road course experience. He's more of an oval expert himself, uh, but he's back in the 30s. Uh, but Vital Winslow and Shumi and Mercedes really carrying the banner for the Winslow brothers. They're running 5th, 6th, and 7th right now. Sean Spicoli going back to this battle for 20th place. Uh, Spicoli has actually taken back 20th place. So Murphy Weller is really starting to push there on the inside. And Branimir Nikolaev is really starting to enter this battle now too. There's uh, Hinkley Scarberry in the background, but he's uh, he looks a little too damaged to do anything Ooh, looks like we got a fake there by Murphy Weller. He's going to pull on the inside, and he's going to try and go around here, but looks like Spicoli's going to pull away on the outside. Oh, they're still too wide, but Murphy Weller is going to get him in the break zone there, and he's going to take 20th place back, and Nikolaev, is he going to try and follow? It looks like he is on the inside, but Spicoli pulls away. Very good battle back here for the final points paying position as Murphy Weller takes that over in the 87 Gottfried Homestead in front of this uh, doesn't seem to be uh, affected too much by that. Uh, Leonid Chernov really has kind of dropped off 
as far as lap times go. Um, looks like he really did burn off a bunch of his stuff trying to catch up to Isaac Kowalczyk, as now he's about to fall into the clutches of Sergei Yakovsky there in the 61 car, and uh, yeah, he's, he's reporting that uh, there's a vibration in that car, and it's slowly getting worse. Uh, might be... Uh, oh, yep, there he goes. There's... That car just shut off. Uh, there is... The, the engine just died in that car. Um, I'm not sure what exactly failed on that 66 car, but he is done from second place. As he continues to drop back, uh, he's trying to get that car back to the pits, but it's not refiring. And he's trying to limp this up the hill, and that's just not going to work. Uh, all those positions there, you can see him losing. He's letting them go by on the inside. Uh, gentlemanly move by Leonid Chernov, but unfortunately his day is done. Uh, you can see there, the car is just barely crawling. And a tough break for Rus Autosport, who are really hoping to sweep the podium here today, and they had the speed to do it. But unfortunately, unreliability strikes the 66 car, and that's going to put him out of the race from second place. Franz Bergman, same lap here. Uh, he had, I believe he had just come out of the pits, and uh, that car is going to slow down and uh, die on him here on lap number 13. Uh, he was running back in 30th place, so this doesn't really affect the points paying positions all that much. There goes Marius Rutcher, his teammate, right on by. Here's Davius Flimflam uh, with Clint Lend, and he's holding up cars as usual. There goes Shumi Winslow, and he's going to pull in front of Mercedes Winslow here, and he's having none of that. He dumps him into the inside wall, and uh, he's going to spin out there, but keep going. Uh, just some rear end damage on that number 990 car. Uh, Davius Flimflam uh, was around two years ago at the Cleveland Grand Prix driving a uh, car very similar to this and he was still very slow there. Uh, Christopher Loxon now has caught up to Vital Winslow and he's going to try and make a pass here on the inside going for seventh place. So he pulls that off very easily. There's Clint Land and he's going to try and block. No, they just split him. Uh, Vital Winslow on the inside. Nope. Uh, looks like Loxon is just that much faster than him. He's going to start pulling away. Uh, Davius Flimflam trying to make it back to the pits. There's Dahlia Lewy. Goes into the back of Davius Flimflam, and nobody's really too happy with him right now. Uh, he's really um, uh, Zimzam there, Flimflams. And uh, is he going to come into the pits? Uh, no, he's not. He's going to stay out on track and be even more of a nuisance, even slower now. Jorge Verona gets stunned by Dahlia Aliwi, who's really just kind of had enough of these back markers, and uh, rightfully so. I mean, they're all over the track. They're 40 seconds slower than the cars up front, and uh, Jorge Verona just got dumped for good reason, pretty much. And there's Davies Flimflam being uh, a sped box as usual. He gets hit, uh, Jorge Verona gets hit by Murphy Weller there, and it looks like Brandomir Nikolaev has moved up into the points. Um, Isaac Kowalczyk has really actually kind of lost some time here to Sergei Yakovsky, and you can see why, as he's surrounded by Giuseppe Balducci there and uh, Marius Rutcher. Now, these two cars are not running in the points. I believe they're running 26th and 27th right now. Both had to make unscheduled pit stops. Uh, well, but the, uh, Balducci actually broke down on track, but uh, these cars are running just fast enough that they've been able to hold off, Chris, uh, hold off Isaac Kowalczyk. Uh, Christopher Loxon is in 7th place, excuse that, uh, but uh, Sergei Yakovsky has definitely made up some time, but now that uh, Kowalczyk has gotten by the two lapped cars there of Rutcher and Balducci, he's really started to put another gap back on Yakovsky, as uh, even though he had lost 3 seconds a lap to Yakovsky, now that he's free, he's in clean air, and he's really pulling away, especially since uh, that Yakovsky has to deal with the lap traffic now as Christopher Loxon making a pass on Mercedes Winslow up to 6th place. So he is really soldiering forward. Uh, actually, no, this is 5th place. I forgot that Leonid Chernov had dropped out of this. So he is up to 5th place now, going around, and now he sets his, sh his uh, sights on Shumi Winslow up there in the 713 car. Mercedes back to 6th place, and Christopher Loxon moves up into the top 5 for the first time today. An excellent drive by this number 73 Gessler, just doing what he can to salvage this week. Mercedes Winslow reporting a loose wheel on that number 644 car, and he's going to dive into the pits here uh, with just a few laps to go. Tough break for him. He was uh, lap number 17 of 20. He had three more laps to go, but unfortunately the loose wheel was just too bad, 
and he had to bring his car into the pits, and uh, that's just going to be the end of the day for uh, the 644 car as far as going at, as uh, getting a top 10 goes. He will still get points, I believe. Uh, Gottfried Homestead unfortunately suffers a suspension failure on that 06 car while running in 22nd place. He had lost a points paying position, but was still running. Uh, decently strong, hoping for uh, a couple cars to follow. Jorge Verona gets into the way of uh, Louis Ballard. He gets turned, and there's Dave Yes Flim Flam, and that car just went over. That's something you don't see any day. The two slowest cars on track flipping each other, but Jorge Verona is going to drive that car away, and he is going to retire that car once he gets back to the pits in 10 million years. Uh, Shumi Winslow now. A great battle developing here for fourth place. There's the uh, damaged car of Davies Flim Flam. They're going to pass him without uh, too much of a problem, I think. Oh, he's pushing wide. And Shumi Winslow uses him as a block on Christopher Loxon. Great battle going on there. Shumi Winslow doing all he can to stay in front of the clearly superior Christopher Loxon. And, and he just has to hold on for three more laps. It's lap 18 of 20, and he's just trying to hang on for dear life, trying to salvage a fourth place out of this day to block the resurgent Christopher Loxanen from passing him for a fourth place position. Uh, oh, looks like I believe that's Michael Abulin in the 90 car, yep. And that's the end of his day. He's going to drop out with a suspension failure on that number 90 car. Tough break for him, but he wasn't really running in the points. Here, a points battle has developed uh, with just one lap to go. Coming to the white flag, Conceso Montiero, despite having to make an unscheduled pit stop, has worked her way up to 21st. And Sean Spicoli is holding down the final points paying position here with just one lap to go. Sean Spicoli versus Conceso Montiero in the 68 car. Who is going to get the final points paying position here? Uh, headed into turn one, uh, she's starting to set him up, but first, Let's take a look at this battle for fourth place between Shumi Winslow and Christopher Loxon. He pulls to the outside, inside now, uh, headed into this turn, and it looks like he's going to try and get a run, but Shumi Winslow trying to get a run on the inside here, headed into this next turn, got the S's there, and uh, he's starting to pull ahead just a little bit, but Christopher Loxon hits a grip spot, and he pulls away. Christopher Loxon is going to take fourth place away from Shumi Winslow, and unfortunately, on the white flag lap, Shumi Winslow is going to lose that fourth place position. It's still going to be a very good run for him. Conceso Montiero trying to do the same thing that Loxanen did to Winslow there on Spicoli. And uh, looks like she has the speed. She's pulling alongside uh, Spicoli. She might be able to do it. Oh, there's a lapped car there. Clint Lend is going to ruin the fun. And <sighs> lapped cars. That's all I really need to say. Look at this. This is ridiculous. Conceso Montiero should be in 20th place, but because of the, the dumbass in the zero car, and now there goes that points battle. Uh, Christopher Loxanen uh, up to fourth place, but this is not Christopher Loxanen. This is Isaac Kowalczyk. I keep getting these two confused. Uh, Isaac Kowalczyk rounding the final corner and will come down the front stretch and win a dominating performance here at Brno, uh, taking a 1-2 for Rus Autosport here today. Sergei Yakovsky comes home second. Louis Ballard, very quiet run, brings that car home in third place and continues to solidify a very strong PCC Europe Championship run. Christopher Loxon has an amazing drive from 32nd to fourth place, and uh, hopefully he can carry some of that momentum to that race in Karyala that he qualified for. Uh, Shumi Winslow hangs on to finish fifth. Vital Winslow in sixth place, an excellent run by him. Jan Schmidt, uh, Christopher Loxon's overshadowed teammate, finishes in seventh place. Still a respectable run for that 37 car. Louis Philippe Goslin continues to carry the uh, seventh gear Autosport banner and leads that team in eighth place. Michael Grant has a very quiet run in ninth place for that fixed it racing car. Uh, I believe they're in conjunction with Australian Motorsports. Uh, Dahlia Aliwi brings that car home in 10th place. A strong run for the 001, as uh, didn't really expect too much out of that team, but they really did quite a good job here today. Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer, same thing for him. Uh, he qualified well and just ran consistently well today, and he finished in 11th place. Good job for him. Mercedes Winslow, despite that unscheduled pit stop, drops from 6th place to 12th in the final running order, still getting 12th place. 
16 points. That's going to do very good uh, for his uh, hopes in the championship. Mark Donovan continuing to do a strong job in that 83 car. I believe that's the second time he's finished 13th in a row. Uh, so 14 points for him. Carolina Storman, despite running into uh, one of the lapped cars, finished 14th, did a good job. Aaron Williams in the 94 dropped a few positions late, but finished 15th overall. Anders Magnuson in that uh, 07 car for Northern Light brings it home in 16th place and gets 8 points. Uh, he also ran very well in the WSCC race here earlier today and uh, netted some points in that race as well. So overall, a very good day for Anders Magnuson. Gracie Benson uh, just ran a very anonymous race and brought that car home in 17th, netting six points. Murphy Weller uh, was involved in a very good battle with Branimir Nikolaev and Sean Spicoli and Conceso Montiero. And uh, unfortunately, Montiero uh, was the uh, loser in that situation. I believe Sean Spicoli owes Clint Lend a thank you card for that um, last lap maneuver there. Uh, but Sean Spicoli gets one valuable point. Uh, for that 82 Retro 80 racing team. Now looking at points, Louis Ballard has taken the top spot in the championship, 145 points, uh, five points over Sergei Yakovsky, who finished in second here today. Isaac Kowalczyk with that win jumps up to third over Leonid Chernov, who unfortunately did not score any points. Christopher Loxanen, a uh, very good uh, points day for him, gets him up to fifth place in the standings. Vital Winslow leads the Winslow brothers with 81 points, driving car 81. Uh, interesting coincidence there. Michael Grant in seventh place having a very quiet but very strong run in this PCC Europe Championship. Conceso Montiero unfortunately did not score any points and is down to eighth place. Shumi Winslow, Carolina Storman, uh, Jan Schmidt, and Branimir Nikolaev ninth through twelfth separated by four points. Uh, let's put uh, Conceso Montiero in there eighth through twelfth separated by five points. So a very close points battle down there uh, going for the top ten. Branimir Nikolaev uh, really uh, struggled today, but managed to get a couple points. Louis-Philippe Goslin starting to push up towards the front as well in the points. Mercedes Winslow uh, is 14th in points. That strong run really boosted his points total. Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer, same for him. Dahlia uh, Aliwi is up to 16th place, uh, tied with Mark Donovan. Mark Donovan has had a few strong runs. As of late, Salvatore Torregrosa has had much better runs than his uh, points place indicates, but unfortunately unreliability has struck that team. Mark Ambrose did not run here at Brno, uh, so he is in 19th place. He uh, remains in 19th place from last week, and Ed Boddicker rounds out your top 20 with 13 points here today.